Hey guys, uh, Stereo Rob, Stereo Talk here in the Garage of Doom. Um, this is a completely unrehearsed, uh, not planned out video or anything. I'm using an Android device for the first time on this, uh, shooting some new video. And so I'm going to see how this works. Um, anyways, uh, today, this evening's topic is going to be about this little uh, Gerard RC... RC88-4 turntable that I picked up a while back. I think I paid something stupid like $5 for it. It was in rough condition, very dusty, very dirty. Um, this particular turntable is actually kind of special because it's very old. It was an originally, it was a mono turntable. Look at this old wood base that's on it and everything. It's a very solid. It has the old, old, old Gerard uh, uh, font on it, of course, and a little brass badge. And it's just a cool turntable all the way around. Now, it was originally a mono turntable that was uh, converted to stereophonic at some point in its life. I don't know when. Um, but something about these idler drive turntables have always just kind of... Uh, kind of impressed me and they, and they kind of give me like a warm fuzzy spot in my heart because these are the type of turntables I grew up with listening to. I didn't get my first real true belt drive turntable until I was a little bit older. And um, these are just, uh, they're fun. Uh, a buddy of mine, Carlos Marty from the uh, the Vintage Hi-Fi and Stereo Group over on Facebook. I met him, he's, he's became a great friend of mine and we have been slowly rebuilding all of these different turntables. But uh, this one, it's uh, mid 50s vintage. This thing's basically 60 years old. It's absolutely ancient. And if you look at this thing, it really is, uh, it's just old looking. The mat, unfortunately, it was just too far gone. It was uh, really, really, really st uh, stiff and brittle. We tried to take it off. It cracked. We used some rubber conditioner on it, which did soften it back up, but unfortunately discolored it. So I'm going to have to probably paint that at some point. Anyways, uh, what we're going to be playing here, I got some uh, Allman Brothers band going on right here. It's a little bit of that. Uh, Midnight Rider. We're going to go ahead and put that on and just kind of see how it, uh, how it sounds. And um, I'm running this right now off of a Kenwood... KR7400, which, believe it or not, was an, an abandoned house find, um, a house that had been foreclosed on and everything was being thrown away. This thing was laying around in a pile of dirt and garbage, and it was, if you look at my posts, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know what condition this thing was in when I got it. It was absolutely just heinous looking. And uh, me and my buddy Sean, Sean Salisbury, we cleaned the thing all up, got it real nice. Uh, he's actually the one who actually pulled it out for me and managed to save it. But, um, so this is just kind of like a miracle story, this receiver, and I'm running it with these, uh, University Classic Mark IIs, which were their top-of-the-line speakers in their day, and so the system's almost period correct except for the receiver. I need to get a vacuum tube-style receiver for this particular turntable for it to sound its best. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and listen to this thing, and we're just going to kind of see what's, uh, what's going on here. Just a basic little pickering cartridge, nothing fancy, but these idler drive turntables are great. I just, I've always liked them. They're simple to use. Enjoy. There's a little bit of hum, not too bad. Now I am running it in mono right now because the left channel is a little funny. It still has a lot of hum to it, but I'll be able to get that kinked out eventually if you listen here. It uh, really is just you know, appalling, obviously, so. <laughs> I'm running this thing in mono for the time being. So this is a work in progress. I mean, the bass is still horrible, but mechanically the thing is sound. Electrically, it's not perfect, but um, this is going to be a very, very cool, very neat little turntable when all said and done. Um, it tracks at about five pounds. It's going to destroy needles quickly and probably destroy turret records quickly, but it's just a neat piece. It has this uh, automatic uh, feature up here, which is really cool, which I really like. But, <coughs> anyways, um, these idler drive turntables, there's one thing that does appeal to me about these, and it's the fact that they don't get wow and flutter like your typical um, belt drive turntable. You won't get that. that that, that wow of the speakers where they're popping in and out and wobbling real bad and slapping. You don't hear that with these. Um, I guess it's more isolated because of the idler driver, whatever, but it's just a, it's a nice, uh, I've always called a friction drive turntable, so it's a friction wheel that spins the, uh, the metal platter, which are actually very simple and easy to work on. They're easier than most people realize. A lot of people say, oh, these are so difficult to work on, blah, 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 blah. Well, they're really not, honestly, guys. So these are very simple turntables, very